Okay guys, so welcome to another tutorial by me in this beta one. As you can see I'm probably wearing the K-Shot shirt because I finally got it. But today we're going to go f uh, and focus on composition from K-Shot. I'm going to go basically over the rendering setup that I use. Uh, the back, back plate uh, that I use and how to uh, edit it in post-production. Since right now we're going ahead and two, using two screens, that's probably because I'm using one is an IPS screen which has deeper blacks, which if you're editing, for example, tires, you don't want to have because it will seem a little bit darker. And if you move it onto uh, a TN panel, you will have color saturation and exposure problems and contrast problems. So we're not going to. If we were going to edit, we're going to edit uh, on a perfectly TN panel, so we make sure that if the brighter uh, blacks are here, that they at least appear normal to the T, uh, to the IPS panel, which has deeper blacks, or amyloid, amyloid and whatsoever, or other, other kind of screen. So what we're, we're not trying to have too much deep blacks, because if you're creating an advertising images, you don't want to have that. That's a definite no-no from all the automotive companies. So we're going to fire up Keyshot and I'm going to show you what I did today. We're actually not going to spend time rendering it because I have already done the pre-render. I'm just going to go go over the setup, the basic setup to save time and make it easier for you to actually to understand. So I have a specific environment. Um, if you have already got HDR, uh, uh, HDR Light Studio, is a bonus but you might if you still don't have it sure okay we can probably manage it with just a key shot light dude as well which is actually pretty good I mean really key shot team you have done a great job making the uh, light studio in your system work okay so we're gonna go ahead and I have a specific uh, HDR for this setup it's, it's not actually uh, contributing to, um, how to say this, it's actually I'm using the, uh, I'm not specific specifically using the backplate HDR, which I normally use if I have a full uh, 20k resolution HDR, but today we're not going to focus that on that. Uh, we're just going to use a backplate and we're going to, we're trying to match the HDR to the backplate and if we have for example previously there was a Dutch uh, uh, what was it I'm not automotive guy it's still on that uh, oh yeah the Dodge Hellcat was actually brief before it was here but I decided to edit it a little bit so actually I can put the Golf GTI Mark 7 into it and that's what we have right here so if anybody's asking what kind of wheels are these, HTRP 104s. Jonathan Verticella, who is a professional in wheel making, he has done uh, these wheels. H HRE wheels themselves in, in the US have given thumbs up for rendering these wheels. So we're gonna see where it goes on from there. So okay, so I, I have to set up. I basically know that this HDR works great with this car right now. If you want to match it to another backplate, then that's your own kind of situation. But we're not going to focus on matching HDR to the backplate today. So I have the camera set up. The first thing I actually want to do on camera setting, I want to make sure that these all all these perspective lines actually line up with the back uh, on with the ground, with the horizon, and with the sky, and try to figure out which is the best way to go. So the angle, uh, the in, uh, inclination, the uh, the rotation and actually to perspective mode as well if we can go over here to focal with focal length and perspective we can actually change it from perspective mode or graphic mode via the slider but we're not going to do that this, this is the perfect setup this is what this is what works for me at least I actually have done an HDR for this because the back uh, the rear of this actually is a little bit darker but we're not going to focus on that we're just going to use this one so I'll pause this right now I'm just going to render the preview of it and it's actually a 6k file so 
I'm gonna render it, I'm gonna pause it right here, and then we're gonna come back after we've done the render, and I'm gonna show you before the edit, and then we're gonna go on and edit the, the actually the image that actually came out of the rendering. So we're gonna stop right here. Okay guys, so we're gonna continue on and we're, go we're actually gonna, I'm gonna stop this rendering so we can go on forwards because I have nine minutes left on my computer so we can edit this. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up uh, Adobe Lightroom. This is the main program I use to actually, to actually post, uh, post produce uh, my renderings. And after that, we're gonna move on to GIMP because that's the other program I actually use to make sure that 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 every every light part and everything is in the right place. And some little bit, little bit of flares here and there. So we're gonna move on with this. I'm gonna open up Lightroom now. Okay, so we're in the rendering section. I'm gonna import it right now. So we're gonna go forwards with that. And we're gonna have a little slight preview here. That's the rendering, and now we're gonna go on and develop it. So first things first, I always like to change the clarity of it a little bit. And turn the exposure down a little bit. And bump up the contrast. Take down the highlights a little bit. Take the shadows, whites. It's a darker car actually, and blacks. This is right for me at least on this screen. Bump up the vibrance and turn down the saturation a little bit. Now we're gonna go here. Lights. This takes all over the overall scene and turns its lights down. I mean highlights. Now lights here as well. Darks. And we're gonna bump it up a little bit and turn the shadows down. And we can have a slight preview of what it looked like before and after. Makes a ton of difference, right? So we're gonna go ahead. But I'm gonna mention this once and only once. It's your own preference how you do your renderings and how you post product it. I'm just giving you some heads up on what to do and what not to do. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the masking tool over here with the gradient. Now we're gonna turn that down and turn the clarity down. So if we bump it up, we can see every bit and piece of the clouds. We don't want to have that because the light's showing that way and this is just not how it goes. Just a little bit clarity down and this down. Okay, so we're done. So we're going to use the brush tool and I'm just going to do it by eye because I'm pretty good, <laughs> good at this. Sorry for saying this. But I'm highlighting all, you can all see that the exposure level is quite high, so I can see where my brush is actually going. So, and by scrolling down and up on the mouse, you can actually change the brush size. And now we're just going to go turn it down. Okay, what was the, oh yeah. I'm, ru I'm running out of memory. Great, good news. That, that's pretty good news that I'm running out of memory that this time. Uh, not 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 on the computer, but on the RAM. <laughs> so that basically means I'm gonna have to go and buy some more RAM because these images take a whole lot of RAM. Okay, so this this looks done for me. I'm gonna go ahead with the wheels and do the wheels as well, a little bit, turn down exposure, bump up the clarity, so I can see the bits and pieces of the little highlights on, the, on that one, and bump up the contrast and turn down the shadows. Okay, for me, it looks fine.
but not as fine as I actually want it to be. So we're going to resize it a little bit so we can have the car <coughs> more into the scene. So we're going to differentiate over here on what looks good and what does not. So you can see the before and after. Looks, uh, <laughs> looks amazing, right? Okay, so we're just going to export it and we're going to come back after we're actually in the GIMP and doing some more editing. Okay, so now we're in GIMP and we're going to go move, move a little bit forwards with this. And we're going to go open up the file where I actually have it. Cloud. Lightroom export, untitled. I have a specific folder, so if I'm going too fast, sorry. I like to do my things my way. That's how I am. Untitled export and go sunset. Boom, so we have the car over here. Cool, right? So we're gonna have a new layer. We're gonna have the brush. We're actually gonna go to this bottom layer and pick a color for color. So, select the layer, bump it up. So we're just gonna go ahead with this and kinda guess where we're we going with this because it it's not gonna look like that in the end <laughs> I'm gonna do an opacity so we can control it a little bit okay well, 13 percent looks about right now we're gonna go add another layer and this time we're gonna go with black same thing opacity percentage Done. Now we're gonna bump it up a little bit more. I mean, actually, quite a lot more. I'm gonna do the black all over again. Okay, we're gonna t turn down the passage a bit more. Actually, this seems about right. And when I deselect all of these, you can clearly see the d different layers. And now we're just going to merge them, merge all visible layers. We're going to go to filters, light and shadow, and supernova. And we're going to make this a little bit larger. And we're going to go ahead with the wheels this time. I'm going to select the perfect spot to actually put a little bit, little bit of layer onto the wheel. I'm going to turn down this for 1, this town to 10, and in this light preview window, boom, add 1. While that's doing that, we can bring up the second menu. <laughs> the middle click back button is actually pretty good when you're trying to scroll around in GIMP or any kind of Photoshop program, the middle button is your friend. The middle click actually. One, ten, and click OK. Here, here, bingo, got it. Okay, I have only one minute left, so we're going to do the last supernova. <laughs> you can put it on all axes of the wheels, uh, and actually the rim. But we're going to just, where the light is the brightest. Now keep that in mind, this actually is um, a matte c color, but it will probably work in the end result. So we're going to head... <coughs> And we're gonna pause this. I'm gonna do a little bit more clearing up these black parts over here, which we don't wanna have, and then we're gonna come back and show you the end result. So here's my before and here's my after. So you can clearly see a difference where I did a little, little editing and whatnot. So this is the end result. I hope you like this short and a really simple tutorial on how I did and which, which was actually really fast. But if you want some specific parts, parts to be done in the future, let me know, I can probably help you out. 
So this has been my tutorial. Enjoy your evening. Goodbye.